Hi, welcome to Fiber Town. This is episode 145. Um, it's the 16th of March, 2016. My name is Emily. I'm Chain of Fools on Ravelry and Fiber Town with an RE on Instagram and on the blog at fibertown.blogspot.com. And I'm on iTunes as well and on YouTube. And I love to hear from you guys on social media. Thank you if you've been in touch. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys on Ravelry and the Ravelry group, which is Fiber Space Town. That po- blah, blah, blah. Fiber Space Town Podcast. Welcome! Um, I should introduce Alice if you have not already met Alice. Here she is. She looks rather severe today. I don't know why. What's up, girlfriend? Yeah, there's just a leaf outside. We have the door open. Hopefully you will hear some bird song at some point because the birds are singing. We have... Um, Although they've been a bit quieted now by construction noises. I think some people are trimming trees somewhere. Um, Yeah, but it's spring and the bluebirds are checking out the house that we have in the bluebird house in the yard. And uh, yeah, Alice has only run after them once. So hopefully they will stay and have bluebird babies. And you'll be nice to them. Hello, I have a lot to talk about today. I have works in progress, no FOs. I have spinning, fiber prep, stitching, some acquisitions, and then some other just random stuff. So let's get started. Um, This month is the new along. The new new is the word of the month. So interpret it as you like, as fits your crafting. Any sort of crafting is eligible to, um, to win a prize. And chatter is also eligible. I love how you guys are talking to each other. Um, There's a lot of nice chatter in that thread. There are a lot of beautiful uh, whips and FOs, new techniques, new things. Um, In fact, the the knit girls are having a new techniques along, so double dip. It's always, always the rule that you can double dip um, in Fiber Town. Now, Stitched by Mimi, you were the winner of last month's knit along, and I haven't heard from you. So, um, please get in touch and let me know which one of these amazing bags you would like from Intuit Knits. This is the one with the the scissors, scissors holder. And then this one is the zombie one, which is awesome. So um, whatever one Stitched by Mimi does not choose will be the prize for this month, the new along. I'm gonna have to put you down, sweetie. Well, you're just falling asleep anyway. All right, say goodbye to the people. We might be back later. All right, go on, girlfriend. Okay, all right, so what else do I have to tell you about? Oh, I have a thank you to the amazing Lara Smoot, who is a, a prolific and talented designer. She sent me her latest pattern called Kilty is Charged. Yeah. Hang on, let me get that back. Kilty is Charged. I love it. It's an Outlander inspired sock pattern. Uh, she's knit it in a variegate, but this would be amazing in any sort of yarn. It has very gorgeous cables, crossover cables. I love it. So, Thank you, Laura. And she is, uh, let's see, does she have, I think she has a design name. Let's see. But her store is called Laura Smoot. Yeah. Spinning Laura on Ravelry. Laura Smoot Designs. She has been very generous and given us uh, patterns for prizes in the past. All right. So works in progress. So many works in progress. Let's start with this one that's closest in my Lovely Holland Handmaid's Bag. I have, I don't know if this was a hoe last week or not. This is my first sock blank sock and it's gonna give birth to sock scraps. There, I've been keeping that in there so that it doesn't um, get tangled up. But yeah, this was from a sock blank I dyed at Fiber Camp this year. Um, uh, That was so much fun. I love sock blank dyeing. I have a few more that I need to At some point, I will die. Maybe I'll give one for a prize. So, it's doing some lovely pooling, or this has done some lovely pooling. In fact, look at the bottom of the foot. That's fun. Let me stick this back in here. And the second one is onto the gusset. 
So 64 stitches, um, cuff is knit on US one and a half, 2.5 millimeters. The heel flap and down to the toe is knit on a US one, which is a 2.25 millimeter. So working on that gusset, I do my gusset on the bottom of the foot, riverbed gusset, I've heard it called that. Um, yeah, and it's making, you know, it's funny with the the tighter gauge, you really can tell less that this has been knit from a sock blank. This is from a double knit sock blank. So I feel like it's maybe not as curly as it's from a single knit. This has not been blocked yet. So yeah, got to get that going. Really enjoying it the way both of the heel flaps did this kind of pooling, which is fun. So that's kind of my on the go knitting. Now I also have my sock yarn blanket. Lots of sock, sock, sock today. Square on the needles still where I have run out of yarn is out of hand spun from my fiber campers. Let me see. I'm trying to remember who spun. One person spun the purple and one person spun the orangey gold. And I applied them together on a spindle. And I have now run out, and so I'm going to I'm going to get some purple from my next sock whip and show you guys, and I'll add that at the top. Now, what else has been done on this this week? I always put the markers so I can tell what has been added. <clears throat> okay, this is hand spun. I don't think I showed you this last week. This is Baby Camel and Muga Silk. It's a spindle spun blend. Uh, this one is um, some Gourmet Stash Poonies, it was Cormo Yak Silk, I don't remember, something Roses was the colorway name. My friend Christina sent me the couple of Poonies, I spun them up, I still have quite a few left. I mean, quite a, few yarn, quite a bit more yarn. That's it. So, <clears throat> pardon me as I stand up here, reach behind me. To my Agatha sock, sock, which is out of silver spun yarn. This is from the Feel Good Yarn Company. It's cotton, combed cotton, or is it brushed? Some sort of cotton. Um, lycra, spandex, and silver. <clears throat> it will be conductive. The metal is supposed to have therapeutic qualities. And I am knitting Agatha socks by New Hampshire Knits, who has the wonderful New Hampshire Knits podcast. So, you notice there's no needle on this. Yeah, I did this heel flap, and look at the stitch definition. It's pretty amazing. I'm having a hard time figuring out gauge, not gauge, but <clears throat> I guess tension, density of the fabric. Density in a sock is never a bad thing. Um, but what I did was make the heel flap and then I just started on the gusset without ever turning the heel. I'm embarrassed to tell you how many times in my life I have done this. But I found out I'm not alone. I posted this on Instagram. And I am definitely not alone in doing this. So it's a short cuff. Um, yeah, I need to, I had to fish out a zero needle to pick up these stitches again. They are, they're not going anywhere, but they're just very fine. So it's very densely knit sock. So today that's on my list to put that back on the needles. And yeah, two socks going at once is too many, I've decided. My other work in progress is my Threshold Sweater <clears throat> by Melanie Berg. Where did I put my iPad? I wanted to show you a picture. Oh, here it is. So the Threshold Sweater is a very very interesting construction, and I am all for those. So let me show you what it looks like when it's finished. So this is being knit out of um, Hazelnut's Artisan Sock. It's a big wheel. I have two. And this is the quill colorway. These come pre-wound. They're 800 yards, so more than enough for a sweater. Out of fingering weight. Okay, so this is what 
the threshold looks like. So we have this sort of lattice with twisted stitches and um, a twisted rib at the neckline. Um, so the construction is fun. Just to give you an idea without getting too much away, you start knitting the back panel. This is the back top. There's the neck hole. Once that's knit, you pick up stitches, you cast on stitches, you pick up more stitches, and then boom, you have this neck hole. Now you, then you start working on the front, and here we have the beginning of the lattice. I'm about a repeat and a half. It's very hard to get an accurate picture of what's happening with this color-wise. So there you have it. Um, So I do believe that the stitches for the sleeves are picked up along here, and this is going to be kind of a drop shoulder look. Yeah. This has got to go back a little bit more. Um, and then, let's see, I need to knit, knit, knit away until it's armhole length, and then it's joined in the round. Threshold. I am enjoying it. Um, Really well written. I will say though, there were a couple things I would not recommend this sweater for a first or second or third sweater pattern. Um, there were a few things that I I had to go on Ravelry and check pattern notes, check forums to see what people had said about this particular part of the pattern. Actually, there were two parts that I just was. Um, that were definitely not spelled out. Oh, here. That's part of my podcast prep. See what good it did me. Um, yeah, parts of the pattern that were not spelled out at all. But using your intuition and some help from Ravelry, I was able to sort of nail down what exactly the designer was talking about. <clears throat> That's it for whips. So on to spinning, 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 spinning. Um, oh, FYI, I am wearing, it's not behaving very well because I've had a cowl, but I'm wearing my, one of my schoolhouse tunics by So Liberated. And this is out of Anna Maria Horner Luminous. I love this fabric, it's super comfy. Um, would love to get more of it sometime. So I have spun, oh, I remember I was gonna get the ball bands for these. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you is a spoiler, spoiler. Go away if you do not want to see the Highland Handmaid's February spin. I have her just regular fiber club. You gone if you don't want to see it? Are you gone? You better be gone because I'm going to show it now. Okay, this is, oh, this is Cheviot, and I was going to tell you, I don't think it's a down breed. Pretty sure it's not a down breed. I think I was thinking of Clun Forest. That is a down breed. I know that for sure. Oh my gosh. Am I going to have to go get the ugh, fleece and fiber source book? Okay. I was supposed to find out, wasn't I? <laughs> so this is it. This is Iris Cheviot. I shamelessly copied Joanna Spring and Susan B. Anderson. I spun half of this traditional three ply. So I've got a nice barber pole and I think I've got like a sport weight. So I did not get, what was the yardage? Let me look, I put it on my phone. I think it was about 150 yards for each skein. Yes. Okay, the three ply was 156 yards. And then the chain ply was 150. So here it is, chain plied. It's still a bit damp here. Let me see if I can just hang it and show you. So this one has got the colors together. And this one is barber pulled. So these will be striped into socks. And they will be sport weight socks. And that should knit up fast and lovely. So Iris, February Highland Handmaid's Sock Club. 
Maybe that will be on the needles next. I don't know. So here it is. About 300 and a little bit more yards. Socks. So many socks lately, you guys. Okay, the other spinning. Oh my gosh. I haven't spun something like this in quite a while. Let me take a drink. Well, this is hobbledehoy. And I'm sort of getting into my hobbledehoy stash and spinning to prepare to make room for more hobbledehoy at Maryland. So here it is. This is potions, cl um, potions class. Harry Potter inspired. How? This is not, not washed yet. But this I got a two ply, this is two ounces. I got 255 yards of a two ply out of two ounces. So um, not particularly thin, but lots of nice yardage. It's black merino, it's bamboo and soy silk and some sparkle. Hobbledehoy, I love you. How gorgeous. So pretty pleased with myself for two lovely spins. And the Highland Handmaids, this again, this was so easy to draft and easy to spin and I just, I love her fiber. I also love Hobbledehoy's fiber. I don't know what will happen with this. It would be, oh, they would be awesome fingerless mitts. It could also go in weaving. All right, so fiber prep, fiber prep. I finished carding Genevieve. Let me just grab Genevieve here. I was going to weigh it. I forgot to do that. I think it's about a pound. It's all carded. These are bats stacked on top of each other. I need to weigh it and find out for sure how much it is, and then I'll make some decisions about how to spin it. Genevieve was the prize-winning fleece of the whole fleece show at Rhinebeck this year. I have a third of her. And there she is. She's a Cormo, did I say? She's a Cormo. And she's a champ. So, gotta weigh that. Ooh, is that casting a shadow? <laughs> Genevieve, you're so big, you're casting a shadow. Okay, put you down here. Um, oh, I also finished combing all of my M skit money penny my Shetland so here she is um, now with the nice weather I'll get I'll get outside and do some more combing today of the flecket which what I have so far of the flecket um, oh the M skit is about eight ounces the the white color and this there's a lot of combing waste you know combs in general you get a lot of waste this is the rest of the Flecket. These are my Viking combs. They are, oh, don't switch cameras, hang on. Okay, my Viking combs, Valkyrie, sorry. These are Valkyrie. I'm not sure if that's the same as Viking combs or not. They are workhorses. I don't have a clamp. I would love to get a clamp for them, but I've, I've gotten really used to just carding or combing by hand without a clamp on a table. And I think I prefer that because I want to be outside where all the um, chaff falls out. Um, look at that. This is just calling to me. Just calls to me. Look at that. Lovely, lovely, lovely fleece. So Money Penny is from the Ross Farm. A little Shetland to you. How precious. Um, so, guys, I'm getting to the end of some of my fleece prep. And, you know, I want to not let it sit forever in one particular form. It needs to transition into its other forms. Um, did you guys listen to Fiber Track, her latest episode? She was talking about um, basically the work of the sheep uh, and, and the shepherd and how... Um, One, the best, well, the best way to me is her way of viewing it 
as um, sort of the sheep works to convert grain and grass into, not grain, I don't think they eat grain, hay, I guess that's a grain, anyway, to convert its food into meat and fiber. Um, and in this case, Genevieve is a fiber, fiber um, animal. And, you know, the work of the shepherd getting the, you know, facilitating that process. So it's fun to think of Genevieve, you know, she's growing her neck, Strymbeck fleece, and she's, um, she's working on it. You know, it's work. It's not a weight. It's work. There's a lot of work that goes into it. And I'm sort of viewing my, you know, the process. It's a process of work. My fleece prep is the same. I get the fleece. I do the work, the process of washing it. I do the, the work of the process of processing it. <laughs> How redundant. I'm lady redundant woman. Um, so, yeah, there's work involved. There's, it's a process, and I love the process. Um, that said, I have, I have experienced being overwhelmed by abundance. Hence my sending out three and a half pounds of sock scraps to a couple of folks a few weeks ago. Um, and I'm feeling that in my fleece right now. So this one, for example, was the first fleece I bought. <clears throat> at my, no, not the first fleece. That fleece was a disaster. <laughs> This is my first Rhinebeck fleece from 2014. It's a Rambouillet Corydale. And look, look at those blocky nice locks. It's a nice sound fleece, no breaks. You know, pulls right off. Here's a little bit of a... So, I have a lot of this. It was about a four or five pound fleece. Look at that. Look at the, this is a bat that I, I carded. So this was Opal. She, you know, that was the fleece's name, the sheep's name. And as I said, Rambouillet Corydale. And I haven't spun any of it yet, but I'm wondering, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I've never de-stashed a fleece, but I'm thinking about it with this one. I do like the color. Um, Maybe I could just de-stash a portion of the fleece. Maybe I'll do that. Is anyone interested? Because <laughs> I do, I have a hard time letting go of this. But it's been on my mind. I still have a Lincoln fleece. I have, I have a lot of combed top from Reflections at Rocklands, which is the farm that Genevieve came from. And that's in Pennsylvania, and that's Kate Bostick. She's the shepherdess. She's amazing. Um, so anyway, that is fiber prep. Is that all about fiber prep? Yes, it's gonna be ongoing. Lots and lots of fiber prep. So stitching, I have stitching to show you and I have acquisitions and then a few little bits and pieces. Stitching this week sort of plays into acquisitions. Um, I have some new embroidery floss thread and I got to work again on my um, drop cloth sampler by Rebecca Rinquist. I did this satin stitch out of the new thread. And I did this tulip, which is all, which is also a back stitch and then filled in with satin stitch out of my new thread. Can you believe it? How gorgeous that is. The thread is two-ply two Tussa silk, and I will show you the source in a minute. I also did a little bit of this with my Sashiko thread. Um, I think that's it. Very relaxing. So let me show you the thread and tell you about where I got it. Let me find it all in here. One, two, um, three, and now there's a fourth. Here it is. So this is um, was what I ordered from Shop Teasel a bit ago. This is not all that she sent because Kimberly is a friend and she is an amazing fiber artist and has the coolest ideas. Okay, so she spun embroidery thread. 
out of Tessa Silk and two plied it. There's the first one. You can find this on uh, um, at her shop, Shop Teasel. Teasel, T-E-A-S-E-L. I guess that's like you know a burr, like a piece of a sticky piece of a plant, spiny and sticky. I. This is amazing stuff. Fuchsia. Matches my shirt. So it works up beautifully. Shine, there's shine, there's body to it. She says it fluffs a lot in the washing. <clears throat> and I would actually love to get some more and do an entire thing just with this. With the Tussa Silk. <clears throat> Pardon me. I think my next um, sampler I'm going to finish next week. Hopefully I will pick up another sampler, or not a sampler, but a, a design to stitch. And I will, I want to get the paisley one. I want to do it all in that. So that's stitching. Let me go and show you the rest of what Kimberly sent me from her shop. She sent me, where are the stitch markers? I'll find them in a minute. So she sent me these <laughs> stunning note cards made by a friend of hers and she sells them in her shop. Um, Unraveled is the person who designed and produces these. Um, all of her stuff is from, is local. She's very into sourcing local. Obviously not the Tussa Silk, but <clears throat> I'm not sure who dyed the Tussa Silk. Maybe it was someone local. Um, so these are fabulous for swap packages. Look at that. I think, did Kimberly take the photos? I don't remember. Hang on, there's a fourth. Envelopes, of course. I'm missing something. There we go. Okay. Some beautiful knitting needles and a hand spun in a basket. <clears throat> and she sent me stitch markers. You can never have too many. Shopteasel.com for living creatively. She's making some amazing project bags right now. I've been, you know, looking on Instagram. My voice is <clears throat> incredibly froggy all of a sudden. I am sorry about that. Now there's one other thing and everything, her presentation is amazing. Everything is beautifully wrapped in plain tissue paper. Un I think it was undyed. And then she talked to me. She gave me some details about everything she sent, including this Amazing, gorgeous. Palette of naturally dyed yarns. Look at that. So let me tell you what they're all dyed with. <clears throat> so Kimberly has been experimenting with natural dyes and she again is using locally grown Merino, grown by a, a shepherdess um, in Washington state. Is it? Let me see. I'm trying to remember the name of the yarn. It's not Ancient Arts. Is it Ancient Arts? I'll tell you in a minute, I think. Um, I've knit with this. It is gorgeous. No, I didn't write down the name of the yarn in my Ravelry. Okay, so this one, dark purple, is a logwood. Um, this was the logwood from the exhaust bath, so a little bit of dye still left in the water. Both of these are logwood. The, this one <clears throat> is lac. It's dyed from lac. I think that's a, is that a tree bark? Oh, again, with a matchy. Um, this was, she said this was tricky to dye, and she feels like she might have felted it a little. Maybe. Still knitable. This one is Matter, Matter Root. This is Osage Orange. Well, that's not accurate at all. And this one is Weld. That's not accurate either. <laughs> but how amazing, how amazing. Um, I think I have a little bit of my plain 
white that these that these were were based out of. And I might put them all together into I mean color work, right? Screams color work. Thank you, Kimberly. I loved, loved, loved that package of goodness. Um, okay, so other acquisitions. I went to the um, the Uniquities. What is the name of this thing? The Uniquities Fiber Farmers Market. And I have a little video my husband took, and I, I might put it together and try to increase my editing skills in iMovie and make a little movie for you guys to watch just a little bit about the event. <clears throat> so look for that. That will be a separate video if indeed it happens. The one thing I bought there was this, Coopworth from Solitude Bowl. This is amazing. And it's joining its friends that I bought at Shenandoah. This is a sport weight. I'm wondering, the colors are very different. Anyway. This is a sport weight yarn. It is um, 340 yards. So I've got a thousand yards ish, a little bit more of this beautiful sport weight Coopworth. Now this came in the mail. This is <clears throat> going to be a dress. And I had these sitting on the table together. I need to make a cardigan out of the out of the Coopworth. Would look great with that. So this is Birch Organic Double Gauze, and it has small flocks of birds, big flocks of birds, and I. <clears throat> pardon me, my voice is just awful. Birch. Let me show you the selvage. I think it's. Birch Bear Camp might be the line. So it's been washed, and I don't know what dress it will be yet. It could be a washi dress. I've knit a fair few, or sewn a few, fair few of those, and they're super comfy. It could be, could be this. I think. I bought this this week also at Oh So Persnickety in Haymarket, Virginia. Um, the Dahlia by Colette. It'd be really cute out of one of these, like a summery one. Um, although I think this would look great out of a more substantial cloth. So um, it might be an Anna dress, actually. And I've made one of those before, and I think that would be stunning as an Anna dress. So what else? Do I, oh, I did get a Ply magazine this week. The cotton issue. fitting. I'm knitting with cotton right now. Um, I've started to read it. You know, I love wool, but I don't know that much about cotton, so bring it on. Um, I'm already, oh gosh, <laughs> I just opened to this ad. This is Beth Smith, and she does wear a tiara. I don't know if it's on a daily basis. <laughs> Look how cute she is. She it does wear those sparkly glasses, and yes, when I took a class from her, she did wear a tiara. If you're a princess, you're a princess, you know? Why fight it? So, um, that is acquisitions, except for one thing, which is kind of creepy, and I'm debating if I'm going to show it to you or not. And now you're like, Emily, you have to show us, aren't you? All right. Pardon me as I do a reach around. Okay, remember, now this is sort of knitting related because I have lost like three pairs of socks this winter to big fat holes and they were due to calluses. Now, I have found, I love a professional pedicure. I can't afford them on a regular basis and to truth be told, I'm a little nervous about the flesh eating bacteria. You know, that you hear about in the news occasionally. Oh, she had a pedicure and then she got an infection and died. Grain of salt, I know. Um, but they are expensive to boot. Now, doing one yourself is, ugh, it's a hassle. You know. Um, and to deal with the calluses, I'm kind of squeamish, you know. If you've ever had a nasty callus and a pedicure, they will take a rasp to it. Like a woodworking tool. And it all always tickles like crazy, and I'm 
in a pedicure chair doing this because I'm, I'm laughing hysterically because it tickles. So my mother got one of these and she had been, you know, saying how great it was. And I finally, after losing the third pair of socks and the, the it was gigantic, you know, shredded, it was shredded. Um, I got, I got one of these. It's an Amope. Have you ever seen one? Yeah, this, this spins around. I'm not going to turn it on because it'll be loud. But this spins around and it's a, I just got some replacement. Looks like this. Amope. Yep. It works. It's not cheap. But for me, it's been worth it. And I just got some replacement ones. It's sort of like heavy duty sandpaper. Um, and it says it has diamond crystals, whatever. It's heavy duty sandpaper and it's battery operated and you buzz your foot and it's really working. So I thought I'd share that as a PSA. Sorry if it totally creeps you out, I get it. Feet are kind of gross. Um, sorry about that. But if you have problems like me, this could be a solution. <laughs> Just listening to myself and laughing. Um, okay, so couple last things. Um, Maryland Sheep and Wool. It's that time of year where, where like I say Maryland Sheep and Wool more frequently as the podcasts go on. I say it uh, maybe every 15 minutes and then the next podcast you might hear it every 10 and then by the time it's almost here, I'm, it's almost every other word. So, um, and I also this time of year go on to the Maryland Sheep and Wool group and see what's cooking basically. And by that, I mean the Ravelry group. And <clears throat> now the podcaster meetup is a lot of fun. And it was more fun at Rhinebeck because the weather was nicer. Um, and we could be outside and not bake in the sun, which has been the case the past few years at Rhinebeck, or Maryland, where the meetup is in the lower corral and there's no shade. And I just can't, I just can't hack it for very long in that um, setting. So um, I put a call out on the Maryland Sheep and Wool Ravelry group and an organizer has very generously found us an indoor place at the usual time from 1 to 2. I think it was the 4-H building. Um, I'll tell you more about it as the time gets closer. And super nice people. Maryland, you're the best. So yes, Podcaster Meetup 2016. Yep, we are on the master schedule for the 4-H Hall, Saturday 1 to 2. There might be a little cleanup going on from the lamb cook-off, which usually ends around noon, but it shouldn't get in our way. And then after that, at 2 o'clock, there's going to be a demo of Blueface Lester that this person is doing in that same spot, so you could stay and watch that. Now, oh, do you guys know what the sheep of the festival is this year? It's Finn Sheep, which... I do love as well as Shetland and Jacob. Finn sheep is a medium wool. Um, it's a really cool sheep. They have litters of lambs. They can have seven or eight lambs at a time. Um, so they are very, um, I guess it's, chances are if you're, <laughs> chances are high if you're eating like um, farm-raised lamb, it, it could be a it could be a fin sheep because they will just sell the ram lambs to um, you know restaurants um, because they can't they have so many sheep at once they can't support them all they can't feed them all anyway um, yeah fin sheep so how cool is that um, yeah that's all I got for Maryland sheep and wolf for now I did want to talk about new podcasts but I'm going to save that um, there are a lot of new podcasts popping up. You guys notice that? Oh, what the heck? We're talking about it. So which ones have I been listening to? I'm going to draw up my YouTube because I find I'm using YouTube for podcasts more and more. <sighs> Do you guys watch The Knit Shift? I've talked about her before. She's fun. Um, okay, let's see what I want to have. So you've all heard, I'm sure, about Inside Number 23. She's adorable. She's Katie. Katie. And um, the first episode of hers I watched was incredibly heavy on sewing and 
she is quite a sewist. Got a lot of skills. I hope she has more sewing soon. Uh, let's see, what else, what else? What else is new? The charm of it. I got, I really enjoy her. Um, what else have I been watching that's new? Um, did I, I know I mentioned um, the Reluctant Sisters. They're fun. I've started watching Pin Feathers and Pearls. I want, to, I have a couple of new ones on my watch list. Oh, Intuit Knits is a new one, which is a lovely, another lovely Canadian podcast. Um, a new French podcaster, young woman, Charlotte and Gus. The Charlotte and Gus Knitting Podcast. She podcasts in English. And I've watched a little bit of hers, one of her episodes, and definitely enjoyed it. Okay, Skeins in the Sky. <clears throat> I can't remember his name, but I want to put him in my pocket and take him home. He's, uh, he's adorable. Skeins in the Sky. Um, really accomplished knitter for someone so young. I'm not sure how, how old he is. I need to find out. Also, Get Lit and Knit. I enjoy that. I respect the message there. What else do we have um, that I haven't mentioned before? You guys watch the Wool in Spinning, right? Knitting podcast. Uh, knitting expat, rather. I'm very curious to see what Andre Sue Knits and Halcyon Yarns are going to be doing. They're merging their two podcasts somehow. Oh, The Knitting Type. I watched one of her episodes and enjoyed it. I have stress knits on stress knits on my list to watch. I haven't gotten there yet. Sticks and twine, I enjoy him. He's another Canadian. Um, the naughty knitwits, as always, hilarious. The passion knit spinner podcast with Tracy. She's got a great podcast too. I really enjoy her. Bookish Stitcher, awesome podcast. Oh, what else is new? Um, Sock Cetera is on my list to watch. And the Periscoping Sisters also. I have not watched them. Um, what Shara made is also on my list. Spicy Homemaker. She's, it's a great one. The Grocery Girls is on my list. I have a lot of new podcasts that I haven't tried yet. Oh, if you are Spanish speaking, do you watch Las Knitting Amigas with Jogi Locatelli and, and Vero, her friend? I think Vero is in Uruguay and Hohi is in Argentina, of course. And I'm just going to mention something about Hohi right now. Um, there's some craziness. Okay, the government of Argentina has been through a really hard decade, and so have the people. They're financially financial crisis, and I mean, it's been it's been bad. And they're not allowed to receive mail. From outside the country. So Hohi, I guess maybe they can get like two packages a year. There's some weird rule. And then they said, okay, you were going to allow packages and the lines at the post office were crazy. And then they took it back. Never mind. Take backsies. And so Hohi can't get yarn. She can't get yarn delivered. Can you imagine that? And she is such a prolific designer, an amazing designer. So another PSA, if you're going to, um, Argentina, could you mule some yarn for Hohi? I just want to put it out there. If anyone's planning a trip to Argentina, get in touch with her. Because poor lady cannot get yarn delivered to her in her country. So, yes, things you take for granted. Um, first world problems. That's, I don't know. I don't know what you call that problem. I don't want to go there. But anyway, I hope you all are getting yarn delivered to your house. Because that's fun. Um, I am, I am going to get some delivered to my house soon, hopefully. We shall see. This weekend, I am recording with Sarah. We're doing another Fiber West episode, and it'll probably go up next week sometime. Um, we are not going to the Homespun Yarn Party. We're going to podcast instead and save our pennies for Maryland Sheep and Wool, but you should go to the Homespun Yarn Party. Don't be like us. You should go. You should go and visit, um... A little teapot designs, I, although she's changing her name. I think it's something like Middlebrook Farm. Anyway, Anne, Anne Choi, she has amazing, amazing stuff. The Ross Farm, amazing, amazing fiber. Dragonfly fibers, 
all sorts of other indies are going to be there. So, yeah, if you were in Maryland or the D.C. area, go to, um, oh gosh, what's the name of the mill? It's, a, it's in a, a historic mill, and it's a very cool event. So, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys um, in about five days when we sit down and do our, West, our Fiber West episode. And until then, take care.